What is up, Mappers? Welcome back to another very exciting video out here in the bait making garage, and we are doing just that. If you guys saw the thumbnail in the title and the description, everything in this video, it's obvious what we're gonna make. We're gonna make a big old nasty shad style swim bait, glide bait. If you've been watching my channel for a while, this right here, the old Hinkle shad, has been pretty much a mainstay. I mean, look at this thing. This is one of the couple I have that are completely beat to hell and destroyed because I've caught so many fish on them. They're freaking fish catchers, and we're gonna create our own. But we're not gonna create just any type of shad glide bait. Uh, if you watched my video a couple weeks ago, I was doing some fishing and I actually snagged a shad. And a lot of you guys said I should take a picture of that shad. And then if you watched another one of my videos, I actually made a photo finish paint job on a shad where you take a picture of that fish and you actually transpose it onto the bait, epoxy it on there and make it, I don't know, very unique, obviously extremely realistic. Well, guess what? We're going to use this image I took of that shad right there that we snagged and we're going to turn that into that glide bait. So not only are we going to hopefully make a badass bait and not only are we going to hopefully put this fish on it that we caught which I don't know if it's ever been done before, but we are also going to go out and uh, try to catch a fish on it tomorrow, hopefully within 24 hours. We gotta get started though, this is gonna take some work. Okay, so first things first, we obviously gotta get the, uh, the, the size, the shape, the profile, the bait, and everything laid out. We're gonna use basswood. Once again, we still got this big chunk of basswood. That thing worked awesome in the last project. So we're gonna use it for this. So I went ahead and I actually already, uh, I put this image of the shad from my phone onto the computer and this is the black and white image of it. We're just going to use that to use as a, a kind of a cutout. I, obviously, we don't need both. We just need one of those. But I went ahead, and if you guys remember the process, you actually have to print onto a piece of tissue paper that is, uh, that's glue-sticked onto regular paper. It sucks, but look how beautiful that turned out for the photo finish. So that's what we're going to use for the final photo finish. For now, we're going to use this guy as a profile, I think. Here's the, uh, the semblance of the Hinkle Shad. Hinkle Shad's about nine and a half inches. So almost as, uh, as long, but maybe even a little bit taller profile bed. We might kind of kind of shave some of that off, especially through the process, of course, of putting that joint in and everything. But um, yeah, this is gonna be a little bit longer bait, the Hinkle is, and I think we're gonna add a, uh, a little plas hard plastic tail to it as opposed to a soft plastic design, but I'm pretty excited about that, and I'm really, Excited about that. Let's get to chopping. I really like the thickness of this too. I think we're gonna leave it uh, about like this. It's about an inch and a half to, no, I'm just totally kidding guys. We're probably gonna make it kind of similar to old Mr. Hinkle Shad when it comes to thickness. So the first part of the bait, it, it has a blunt nose. It widens to about, uh, we'll measure that real quick, but we'll make it similar to that because we don't want this bait to be too heavy. It's already a big bulky bait and it's gonna be wood. We're gonna have to add some weight to this for sure because this Hinkle is a resin bait, so you can make it a little bit lighter and has a little bit more sinking properties. We're going to add quite a bit of lead to the bottom of this guy to get it to sink just right. Um, super slow sink, that is. So we're going to get that pretty close to the same as the old Hinkle and uh, kind of go from there. So with the bull, Mr. Hinkle, at the widest point, dead center in the middle part of the bait is 1.05. So just a hair over an inch. So we're definitely going to have to, uh, we're going to cut this guy down. Let's start making them about that one inch. Cut to there. We'll cut about half of this off, as you guys can see. And then uh, we'll go from there. Hey, there's one thing I like too. It was a two inch piece, so if we totally hate this one, 
we'll make another. All right, we gotta make this thinner. This has got a taper from the front, it's gotta taper wider, and then it's gotta taper down big time towards the tail. So we're gonna cut some of that real quick with the blade before we go to the, the belt sander. actually kind of happy with that. Obviously very very rough at this point. I think we want that bottom to stay eh, maybe a little bit flatter than the top just for more balance because I think it's gonna be hard to get this bait balance just right but I'm actually pretty happy. We gotta cut a tail slot still and uh, we're gonna do a bunch of sanding before we cut the joint into it but all in all so far I'm pretty happy. Okay, work some magic with the sander now. I am actually super happy with that. I'm getting better guys. Obviously we got some uh, imperfections. We'll hand sand these out quick and then we'll be ready for some uh, hook, hook, no, tail slot, cut the joint, seal it, start drilling holes. But pow, we're getting there. So time to cut the joint. Honestly, I'm I'm pretty nervous about this part of it, but we're gonna we're gonna give it our go. See what we can do here. But putting it next to the hankle, you can see the body shape is uh, it's coming together pretty similarly. Mine might be a little bit wider. I'm not sure. The hankle definitely has a bigger head, blunter nose, which hopefully that'll grab enough water to give it a really good gliding motion. But tail wise, I mean that's I'm a half inch shorter is all, and honestly that'll be made up for when we add the joint to it. But the joint doesn't look like it's anything too crazy. We'll probably mark about where that joint comes to a point right there and uh, try to get back there. But yeah, I think that's doable. Let's try that. Okay, took some serious finessing, but I am honestly super, super happy with how this guy turned out. So here's what we got so far. Um, the joint, props to all you bait makers out there, that joint is so hard to get right. It took me a couple extra cuts, but everything's lined up now. Um, I think it's going to look really good and have really good action in the water. Next step, we got to get some, uh, is that right? There we go. Like so. Anyways, next step, we gotta get some uh, some weight in this guy right here. I'm probably gonna drill two good size holes um, on the front cavity, and that's gonna be obviously the main source of weight. I don't think in these glide baits, I honestly have no idea, but I don't think there's much weight in this back guy here. Maybe something right there just to balance the bait, but I think the center of gravity, for the most part, since this bait is gonna go like so, the center of gravity is like right here. So we need our, our bulk of our weight right there. I'm gonna drill some deep holes. Still don't have a drill press, so yeah, give me a hard time, guys. I don't really care. Um, but we're gonna drill our, our main two holes right dead center in the middle of the belly right here. And then, uh, and then I got some lead melt. We're gonna pour some lead in there. And then we're gonna float test it. Alright, 
boom. We got two holes for weights right there. We're going to drill one and be kind of careful with it in the back cavity too. Make sure, of course, that we got it in the bottom. Yep, this guy right here. All right, boom. So we got three holes drilled. Hook hanger's going right there in the back. Hook hanger's going right there in the front. Just like old Mr. Hankel. We'll put them right about right there. And right behind that guy right there. We don't have much room to spare. We definitely want it in the meat. So, yeah, let's add some weight to this guy and see how she floats, sinks. We want a very slow sink. Okay, very precise measurements of ish. Dries super quick. We'll just fill both of these guys. That's cool. Fill this back guy. And once this dries, which it's very close, we're going to figure out how much to take out because that was quite a bit of lead. I think we added like probably an ounce and a half of lead to this front piece, which might be okay. We need it to be a pretty heavy bait, but probably not that heavy. So I'm super torn on what to do for this joint right here, but I think what I decided on is I'm actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut some little notches out of here. I'm gonna drill uh, a little post all the way into this back piece right here. And then we're just gonna use two of these little hinge brackets right here to hold it in place. I see those baits all the time, but now that I'm actually making it myself, it's like, it's not easy, but. Let's try something. First, I'm gonna do the hook hangers. So let's start with something simple. How about that? The front hanger, where the tie is gonna be. These things are strong as a sum bitch, so I'm not too worried about them pulling out ever. I mean, look how big that guy is right there. Where are you going? No. Basswood is kind of a middle hardness wood. It's not as soft as something like balsa, but it's not super, super hard. So it is easy to work with. It's honestly, it's, it's one of the best woods you can work with, which is why we're gonna use it for several of our projects. Now, one thing I did notice on the Hinkle is that front nose tie is uh, horizontal, which I think might be something that's necessary for a glide bait. We're gonna try that with this guy. See how that looks. All right, so we blew some holes open a little bit right there, and that is going to allow our hinges to sit a little bit more flush. Pilot holes, get our hinge guys in there good. I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out, but it's gonna turn out. We're just gonna do it. We're just gonna go with it. And we might destroy our beautiful bait that we made by the time we're done trying to figure this out. But we're gonna learn something through the process. It's gonna help us for next time if we do destroy it. Or maybe we'll make an amazing bait, who knows. Yeah, I'm definitely gl glad I drilled some of those bigger holes in there. I like that. And then if that's too close, too far in, we can actually angle, we can unscrew it one or, once or twice. It's gonna be very close. We might wanna unscrew it one time actually right now. Cool. This is gonna be interesting. I have no idea if this is gonna work, but it ain't going anywhere. We do know that. All right, I just realized you guys probably can't see anything that I'm talking about, but basically what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna now mark on this guy where those joints are gonna meet, which is gonna be about right there. And then we're gonna cut in, straight in to this and those spots, and then we're gonna drill a pen or a drill bit or, or something in there, and that's going to go 
into these guys right here. And damn it, I hope this bait glides because this is a little bit interesting. I've never made one like this, like I was telling you guys. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Probably didn't need to tell you that though. You probably can tell. Damn, let's cut it. That actually turned out really, really solid. Time to drill a pin on the top, straight through there, see what she looks like. All right, I think I decided I'm going to use good old fashioned stainless steel pop rivet. It's gonna be about the right length and we're gonna glue it in there to set it. I think that'll work, we're gonna use that. That'll be plenty. We'll go in from the top, drill it to about there, and these things are, uh, yeah, it's not gonna bend out, basically. This part is gonna be tough without a drill press. Let's start with the small bit first. That's a better idea. Good. Bigger bit. We are getting there, guys. Look at this. Pen goes in there. That one's clogged. Pen through. Pen through. And then we just gotta get that guy. We'll use a nail set for him to go down there a little bit further. That's actually going to work. That's incredible. I can't believe it actually worked. All right, we're going to shoot some super glue into these cavities, like so. And then really quick, right behind it, we're going to line these guys up, which they do about perfectly. We're going to drop this pen. Well, after many trials, tribulations, everything else, there should be the old Chad. All right, now we gotta wait it, see if she sinks. See how fast she sinks, I guess. We, we know she's gonna sink. Real quick little sink test. We want a very, very slow sink. I assume this guy is going to sink like a rock first time, but, oh wow. It's actually like almost perfect. Especially since we're going to add weight of hooks, hangers, etc. Okay, I'm happy with that actually. Because I'm not going to add any more weight, but the hooks and everything will. And we can always add lead wire on the hooks too, but that is awesome to see. That's about like the hinkle, because the hinkle floats too. Until you reel it, and this water is probably colder out of the tap than it's going to be at the lake tomorrow. You can see. Let's drop them both at the same time just to kind of see what they look like. Oh, identical almost? Okay, I guess that's good. Sweet. So I decided I'm not happy with the size hook hangers I got, so I need to run to the, the old store in a second. This is too small. This is too big and clunky and clumsy since, I mean, looking at these, this is one thing I don't have that I wish I do. I need to invest in some of these, but the Hinkle actually, this one doesn't even work that well, but, oh, there we go. That one, you can see it. The Hinkle actually comes with these. It's like a little post inside, and then the hook hanger can swivel. That way fish can't get leverage to throw the bait. So we're really going to have to winch on these fish if and when we, we hook one on this guy, but I got the, the holes drilled for and everything. Real quick before I go to the store, I got to go pick Dad Master up from school, so we're just going to go to the store when I get him. But I want the tail to be similar to this Hinkle. I've always been a huge fan of this bigger forked tail design, so we're gonna make it very similar. go nice and big Lexan tail so it's gonna be very durable 
We've got her about perfectly shaped. We should have cut this hole a little bit bigger, but I'm pretty happy with that. We're going to uh, we'll make some changes to this. This will be the thin side will be on the top, so that'll go like that. I like that. Let's make some lines in this too. I'm gonna I'm gonna dremel some lines in this guy, and then we'll paint him too, just to look more realistic. <laughs> There. Gonna clean them up a little bit, but I actually kind of like that. Looks like something, right? I think it'll look a lot cooler when I get some paint in there. All right, there she is. This guy's not attached yet, the tail. Um, we're gonna do that actually at the very end, so we're gonna take this guy out for now. But that's her. That's uh, what it looks like, and I am freaking jacked about that. Got the hook hangers put in, um, just screwed them in, super glued them in. We're gonna, I mean, finish them in there and everything. So we should be good to go on that eventually, but next step is going to be the finishing. We're going to make this guy look real sexy. Let's get to it. There we are. Beauteous shad bait. The actual shad that I caught, well, snagged a few weeks ago. Ready to go. So, as you can see, it's, uh, it's going to fit out perfectly. We're going to photo finish it. Just like last time, we need to, uh, we need to do the proper steps to do this photo finish, which can suck. It's a pain in the dick. First step, we gotta remove the tissue from the regular paper without tearing the tissue paper like we just about did there. Boom. And then we're gonna grab some foil. This is just like the worst process ever. But it looks damn beautiful and you guys like it. And I like it, so we're doing it again. Again. Alright. Make sure this guy is flat and sexy and good. I don't like this. This thing in the back is not flat and sexy. Good. Cool. Better. A little happy about that. So we're going to spray some spray adhesive down. We're going to flatten this guy out right onto the foil. Love how much that green came out in that shad. And once we get him nice and wet. We're really going to see that. Boom. There we are. Now we cut them out with the little exacto blade, which is very dull. That's okay. It'll still work. Cutting tissue. A chad. Done. Now for the hard part. Gotta put this in the bait. Especially hard this time because we gotta cut it in half and make two pieces. But look at that. She's gonna look damn good when we get it done. Alright, I think we're we're getting to the point where I'm happy with how this lays out. Time to put her on here. It's always a scary process. I feel really good about this one. Wait. Would you look at that? Looks sort of like a shad. What do you know? All right, really like how that finish turned out. Next step is to clear coat. And then when that's dry, we will paint. So last time we did this, and we, we coated with this UV coating, I told you guys I was going to go ahead and, and set up a better situation to cure these baits by the next video I shot making baits with this. Well, guess what? We did not. So we're going to use the same way as last time, and it's going to work out just fine. We're going to hang them, and we're going to shine some super bright UV, and then this bitch is going to cure. You guys can get over it. And we're going to leave paintbrush bristles, apparently, in the middle of the coat, too and wreck the bait and make it not look as pretty. Yes, this is the smallest paintbrush in North America. It's gonna take three years. It's okay though. We got time, sorta. Of. So we're gonna top coat this and then we're gonna paint it, obviously. Fade, blend in the top and bottom. And then she's gonna be ready for some hardware and some water. I cannot wait for the water part because this thing looks bad ass. Okay, 
I'm very happy with how everything's turned out so far. Like, to be honest, I'm super, super excited. A couple little things. Um, we got to harden up that top coat, and then we're going to fade in the top and the bottom with, a, I think we're just going to do pretty basic. We're going to do white on the bottom. We're going to do a darker grayish black on the top, and we're going to shoot uh, in the spirit of the green sides and everything that really popped when we took that picture, and then we uh, saturated everything. Worked on the uh, the details of that image before we printed it out. Uh, we're going to use a lot of green. I think green highlights throughout the top of the fish and then maybe some purple on the bottom. It's going to catch some fish. I'm excited about this bait. See you guys in a little bit. Oh, look who it is. Hello. How's school today? Good. You ready to watch some painting take place? Mm -hmm. You're artistic. You could probably figure this out better than me. I'm going to teach you. Deal? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. suppose first we better see if it's all curd. Curd up, Max. Oh yeah. Oh God, it's beautiful. I love it. All right, real quick, let's shoot some paint on this guy. Top, bottom, fades, pretty colorations, and mostly get these lights turned off because they're burning my retinas. So we're gonna start with a white Maximus. Mm -hmm. How do you make the airbrush go? Yeah. Push it down, shoots air, pull it back. Is how much it shoots. Wow, we already don't have any white. When you pull it down, it shoots the paint. All right, didn't shoot the best, but nice fade action on the bottom of that guy. Time to put some black on the top, and then we'll put some pretty pearlescence and golds to make it really pop. Okay, Maximus, time for some black. This one will show up a lot better. And it sprays a lot better. Even though everything's cold and it doesn't want to spray right tonight, this one should be money. Maybe. Ish. Sweet. Faded nicely, Max. Oh, it looks like something. It does. Almost. <laughs> oh, that was bad. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how the uh, the fading process is going. Looks pretty decent, I would say. Looks looks like the shad we took a picture of. And now we're gonna shoot some iridescent uh, green on top, since it has all this green accent. Actually, a little bit more green. It's not really coming through there. We'll kind of wipe some of this off. This paint that got too far down, but yeah, we got some green up here on the scales that we're gonna kind of blend in. I don't know. We don't have a whole lot left, but. I think she's looking good. Then we're gonna top coat it again. Well, iridescent green didn't want to be iridescent green, so we're just gonna <laughs> shoot some nice gold highlights right around the face and the tail and stuff, and then maybe drop back a little bit, but that's about it. One last color. We're gonna shoot some iridescent violet over the top of all this black. Then we got a nice purple Charlie Sheen over the top of it. Oh, that bait looks like it's gonna get eight. Max approved? Yep. That's all that matters. Alright, nothing crazy, just some uh, natural gray, and I'm going to just keep dropping it. Let's get him sealed up after we drill a couple holes, that way we know where he's going to be in the tail, and boom, we're good to go. That is what he's going to look like. That's the sexy bait, that should get bit. Real quick, I'm just going to drill a pilot hole guy. One, and two. And we're going to put little nails in there, and we'll be good to go. There she is, finished version. I do like how the tail turned out. Top got a little buggered up because you got too much top coat on it, but we trimmed it back a little bit. Lost a little bit of the top coat in the process, but hey, it's not gonna be perfect, but damn, it looks good. And I'm sticking myself, does not feel good. Put a ST36 one out on the front, uh, ST, I think 55 on the back. Also one out should be good. Let's give it a quick wait before we head out to the lake this morning. But you guys can see that five and three eighth ounces. Hair lighter than us, the old hinkle. And the final sink test. Barely, barely sinks. Looks really good. All right, let's go get a wet. It's not very warm today. It's very windy, cold. The 
be honest, I'm disappointed. I'm having some vehicle troubles, so I didn't want to tow my boat. I was going to take you to this badass lake with super clean water. Well, I've caught him really going to swim baby before. No such luck. Instead, we're going to a little local spot. I felt okay about it because, you know, I've caught giant fish here before and it wasn't quite as long of a drive. Luckily, the Zark is coming to uh, work on the old vehicular so we can get on a little road trip next couple days. But got got my swimming bait, got my big Millican fishing rod for the swim bait. And we're going to see if we can do some damage here at this little local pond. All right, let's give this guy a whirl. Still not sure on what the action's going to look like. Oh, uh, perfection? I guess that's okay. It definitely is nose up. So we might need to take a little bit of weight out of the back of it. Which I kind of expected. God, it's freaking windy. This pond kind of sucks right now. But the glide action is like fantastic on this thing definitely going to be a fish catcher i'm not just saying that either this thing is badass we need to put this in front of one's face because we're going to catch one on it okay i'm jacked about this bait now guys hopefully you can see any of that action you probably can't because you know the wind's blowing and it sucks right here but this thing has badass action we just gotta get them a little bit more balanced, which we can probably accomplish actually by just adding some lead wire to that top hook, front hook that is, but the action is money. Damn, can't believe it worked out this well. Now I'm really excited about it. All right, I've caught some really good fish right here in the past. Let's see if there's one sitting here today. If I get bit on this guy, it's probably not gonna look like much. I'm just gonna grind him all the way to the bank because like I was saying, hook hangers are not rotating on this bait, so fish has all the leverage of this five and I think it was what a third ounce bait to toss it I cannot believe how good the action is on this thing and it looks so natural I mean obviously photo finish it better right And it's actually, it's lighter, it's not as clumsy as the Henkel either. So it casts a little better. Should have that same big draw power. Just wish we had a better lake. We might have to go to the creek or To the creek. We gotta try this to the creek. As long as she's not too muddy, might be able to catch some. It's looking decent. Looking decent. We might be good. It's pretty cloudy, but I think it's clean enough. Let's see if we eat this guy. That's some muddy water.
Well, the old creek was uh, was no bueno today. It was not our friend. Gave it a little bit of time. I don't know. There was no sign of life in there. The water was uh, generally way too cloudy for what I usually like to do. To throw a glide bait. But I'm uh, I'm jacked about that bait. I'm, I'm super excited. It looks amazing in the water. I almost want to replicate it with a couple more pieces of wood. Try different types of uh, a few different types of color patterns. Waiting. I'm gonna actually put a little bit more weight towards the nose of the bait and maybe drill out that weight um, on the second half of the bait. I think it'll be perfect to have like the best gliding action of any shad glide or really any glide I've ever seen. It was super, super smooth, just a little bit nose up. It wanted to nose up as I pulled up on it, but it's kind of come to be expected. Let me know guys though, if you want to see more bait making videos like this one, um, down below in the comments, let me know what you want to see next. I need some recommendations. I want to know what baits you guys want to see me uh, make. I'm, I'm not really into making like trinkets or, or any type of like little creatures or stuff like that. Um, that's not really my goal with this bait making stuff. I'm more into making stuff that'll actually go catch fish. My expertise is in fishing, uh, especially with the big baits. I love throwing the big baits and I think I've gathered quite a bit of knowledge to uh, put some stuff together that maybe isn't quite on the market or maybe some stuff that uh, you've probably never seen before. So let me know what you guys want to see moving forward. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more bait making videos. I love doing these. Super fun. The fishing hasn't panned out lately, but that's okay. We'll uh, we'll make more and we'll go catch some fish on those. Hopefully. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Out of here. Peace.